Now, wh one of the main character of the original is that there is this this voice that goes boom, 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 boom which was really prominent in in the in the original. Um, so, let me see. This is the original, which I super distorted. But if I take off the, there is this basically in the original song. The bass is done by by this. Thing, but it's boom, 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 boom. And obviously, when we had to re record the vocals for legal purposes, um, we needed that as well. But uh, I just had um, this very amazing singer, she's called Siren. She came to my studio to record. So I recorded myself the boom, 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 <laughs> which didn't come out really well, but should be here somewhere. Let me see if. No, where is it? My home is no room. I might have deleted it. My home is no window. There is the possibility. It ain't waterproof. Hmm. My home is no handle. I might have deleted Oh no, here it is. My home is no key. Okay. So this is me trying to be. <laughs> And I chopped it really in a very blunt way, so it sounded like really old school. You can hear that the tail is not really well chopped. Normally, I'm, I'm very careful about that, but you know, first, first of all, I was laughing too much when I was doing this because <laughs> it's me, so I didn't want to spend too much time. Um, and again, I shouldn't be saying that, but I added a bit of the original as well, of the original pum 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 pum, so it sounded a bit big. So basically, I had the, the vocals on and the drums, and the poop, 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 which I'm not. And at that point, I, I needed, you know, to, to find a, a good bass line for it. But already, this poop, poop, poop is is quite strong on, on the low frequency. So what I've done is uh, on my on my poop, 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 on the one which is the official one, the other one official is not there. I took off the low the low frequency content and I've added a bit of auto panning so you know it wouldn't be on the on, on in the center when I want to have my bass line it would be always moving a bit. So it's it, you know so it left a bit of space to for the actual bass line. Uh, when it came to the when it comes to, to VST um, I normally use my favorite VST is this one. I don't know if you guys have ever tried it. Ace is uh, is very cheap and uh, it's in my opinion, is the best sounding that I'm plugging that I'm using at the moment, particularly for medium low frequencies, has a very, very strong character. Sometimes it has to be tamed a bit with EQ because it tends to every sound tends to cover the whole the whole spectrum. So you know, if you make a bass you, and you analyze it on the spectrum analyzer, it would sound so big also in high frequencies that it needs a bit of filtering and stuff. But basically, lately I've been using this plugin for all of my bass lines and pretty much everything. Also because it's pretty light on the CPU. So particularly when I'm working on the road, um, where I'm with the laptop, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to risk CPU. And you know, you always have your Facebook on and Twitter and everything <laughs> that you're already having lots of resources. So the bass line in this, um, it's as you can see, still is a is a MIDI part, um, and. Let me play it in solo. Basically, I try. I, I followed what the, the voice is doing, pom 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 pom, and I tried to make it with a bit of this yeah gummy, gummy sound. Um, and I was playing around with this with this sound quite a lot because it has. Um, I think you know when. When you want to do something which is really jumpy, um, it's the, the the way that you play with the release with the, no, the, the normal envelope really creates the whole difference because it's all a game um, for me. It's all a game of you know when all the transients are coming up. If you have super punchy drums, but then the bass has not the correct release or you know the correct settings, you can lose a bit of that punch. Even if you then use the best processing or. Um, lots of compression, which we're going to talk about later. But I, I really spend long, long time on the on the envelopes of, of the bass line, particularly. And sometimes um, I don't remember. But probably on this song as well, on the original project, I have also automated the envelope quite a lot. Because, for example, in parts where there is only the drums and the bass, I, I had the bass going. A bit, you know, these stabs are a bit longer, and when the, the vocals come back in, they're a bit shorter, so they leave a bit of space. It's it's a trick. You know, after many years. Uh, trying to replicate big, you know, bass lines from other records, I found out that what works for me is really 
to create some tiny milliseconds of, of space, of actual silence in between the drums and, and the bass. And, and that in the club with the, you know, creates the effect that the woofers, the subs, are really pushing. Whereas if you have something constantly going on with no tiny breaks, I found out that in clubs, most systems, they don't, they're not quick enough. So, you know, you lose a lot of the transients and that's why some records sounds better than others in clubs. In dance music, um, sometimes we make the mistake of adding, constantly adding something, you know. Um, I remember the first you know, the first releases I've done years ago, they used to have up to 86 or 90 tracks, you know, and, you know, like 35 drum tracks and, and three different bass lines and, and, you know. And the more now I'm learning, the more I'm realizing that, the, you know, less is more in the sense that the smaller the project, the bigger will sound. There is, you know, there is even the most nerdy, you know, in the most nerdy mixing way with the best outboard in the world, you know, you're fighting with space. You know, a, a record is like this little box and the more sound you put, the more it sounds really cool. But at some point you can't go over a, th a certain level. So things will start fighting, particularly, uh, you know, on the low frequency, it's, it's just killing the track. If you add too much low, you're going to have face problems mm -hmm. or, you know, space problems. And in the, with the medium high, like vocals or synths, it's, it's pretty much the same. So now my tracks are much, much simpler than they used to be before. Mm -hmm. I, I've learned really, and uh, I'm trying to force myself to accept something, you know, without overdoing it. Uh, so what I do is, again, I just do, especially, you know, when I'm starting a record, I do 32 or 64 loops with everything muted and I mute and unmute. So, you know, to see, you know, if, if it's enough and if it sounds good, I force myself and I say, okay, let, let's, let's finish this. Maybe I can open 15 delays, you know, on that record and make it, and make the difference, but with no sounds more. It's just like, let me see if I can finish this with a lot of automations, but without adding another little stabby. Whereas before it was a constant, mm. you know, that's why also it, it took me much longer before to finish records, because you're always adding stuff. And I'm sure that lots of, a lot of you can relate to the, to the gigantic screen, screen sessions, basically, and, and big mixers as well. Um, simply, I open another FX channel, and I strap a very heavy compressor on top. So I'm going to do it again with the Cubase one. Like, say, with a crazy ratio, um, fairly... So basically, I compress a lot out of the channel. Wait, let me just... Okay, now we have only the drums. Um, what I do is, the drums are already compressed by, their, by themselves in their, in their channel. And by sending the, the same channel to another compressor, which is really squashing them a lot, what I can do is I add the squash sound to the, to the original drum sound. So basically what you get is the transient sound really, really pushy. And basically you don't have to squash your own drum so you can have all the little nice sounding reverbs and stuff, but you can add a bit of the squash. So I do it now. You can hear I'm adding literally the volume. So you can hear that they sound straight away more punchy, and yet my original drum bass, it's untouched, fairly untouched. So then when you, ha when you are doing all the volumes and stuff, by just adding or taking off the parallel compression, you just add or take off impact without actually modifying the dynamics of the drums. I like the, the, the drums to be fairly dynamic, so the toms have to sound a bit louder in certain points. I don't like strong, you know, drum machine -y. So the parallel compression actually allows you to do, to have the same impact, but yet retain a bit of dynamics. And I do parallel also for all the other sounds. Normally I group, for example, in this case, all the vocals obviously are all in one bus, all heav heavily compressed because the vocals need Lots of compressions because obviously by our nature we, we go up and down. And then I, I parallel the vocals as well. And then I parallel all the synths together. So basically everything gets, you know, this is dance music, so everything gets fairly squashed because you have to sound as loud as the next guy, if not louder. But by, by using parallel instead of direct compression on every single sound, you can have that little trick of, you know, having drums with, or any sound which sounds still a bit moving but yet they, they take off your hat in the club, you know, when, yeah, when yeah. the kick is powerful enough. So, you know, by parallel, it's, it's a really good trick, I think, that you can use on everything.
At Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about the lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. DVR stands for Direct Video Response and the concept is really simple. You upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor. He downloads it and then pushes record on the screen capturing software and evaluates your work. So basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach online and the results speak for themselves. Book your place on a course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.